Now Irene finds out the truth about Nathan and Tug's still looking for a job in Home and Away. puts the tea in Britain. Typhoon. Susie, Auntie Blow will be here soon. Snap! Ah! Kellogg's Rice Krispies, the magic part of your nutritious breakfast. Rice Krispies, you can't imagine a livelier breakfast. Joe loves Campbell's meatballs, and they say we love you. No kidding, Joe. But Mum says, don't you eat too many, or you'll be a meatball too. Take no notice. But simply by hanging out with the meatballs, he becomes their unofficial ruler. The meatballs say, well done, well done, well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Campbell's meaty, beaty, bouncy meatballs. Oh, that's us. They're so much fun. <laughs> now in bolognese sauce. Yum. The idea behind it led to the Nobel Prize for medicine. Its active ingredient changed the lives of over 77 million people. It controls the production of excess stomach acid and keeps it away for longer than an antacid. Now, it's available without a prescription as Tagamet 100 to eclipse the pain of heartburn. Tagamet 100, a breakthrough for heartburn. According to the principle of polarity, many things that exist have their equals and exact opposites. Where there is man, there is woman. And where there is purity, there is, in contrast, a dark and wanton side. And thus to appreciate fully what is pure, one must also have tasted what is wicked. Fruit corner from Muller. Two tempting tastes, one delicious yogurt. And Home and Away will be back tomorrow at the usual time of 1.25. The final of the European Cup Winners' Cup. Arsenal take on the Italian champions, Parma. Don't miss the highlight of the European soccer season, Wednesday, 10 past 7 on ITV. Inside every pack of sugar puffs, there's a free Yalton Towers game. And, Whoa. if you're lucky, you can find a free chance to get to Alton Towers itself. Great Alton Towers. Uh. I've been taken for a ride. If you think ready meals can be dull in some cases, and you want something quicker than takeaway places, then this idea should be right up your alley. It's quick and delicious and fresh from Sun Valley. There's fresh chicken breast, fresh veg you can tell, and a spicy Indian sauce that goes very, very well. It appears you soon got the hang of that. You cooked it yourself in ten minutes flat. Real easy recipes is what you do that makes them Sun Valley. Well, only the best will do the do. For those moments you look forward to, there is only one silk chocolate galaxy. Smooth and creamy. Why have cotton when you can have silk?
Nivea cream moisturizes your skin. Need your loving care, girl. All your love. Nivea cream gently protects your skin. Touch me with your smile, girl. Nivea cream softens and cares for your skin. Need your loving care, babe. Nivea cream. All the care you need. Oxycutum with Oxy10. It really works. Oxycutum. If you protected your wood with saddle and extra on your son's ninth birthday, then watched as the years passed by. By the time it came round to maintenance, he should be old enough to help. Of course, at that age, you probably wouldn't want to. Saddle an extra if you value your wood. Introducing new recipe Pedigree Chum Complete. Supreme nourishment in a dry dock. All the nutrients, vitamins and minerals essential to your dog's well-being. And now it's even meatier. With three great tasting varieties. Original, beef and tripe and lamb and vegetables. Supreme nourishment with the meaty taste dogs love. New recipe, Pedigree Chum Complete. Top breeders recommend it. You love the smell of fabric conditioner, but does it last on your laundry? Mine does. Now I've changed to new Lenore Plus. My washing stays fresh for up to five days. Only new Lenore Plus has time-release freshness. Freshness that's released slowly. Day after day after day. This is fresh. I've just put it out, but I washed it five days ago. With new Lenore Plus, the freshness stays for up to five days. This bank holiday, there's a land dispute in heartbeat. Antler! Get off my line, you creeping thief. You want to run that bugger in? I'll be talking to him, Mr. Ratcliffe. He thinks I'm after his land. I'm not. Just a few things you left behind the last time you stayed the night. There's a surprise addition to the team in the temper centres. <laughs> then Arnold Schwarzenegger stars as a sword-wielding warrior bent on revenge. Crush your enemies. See them driven before you. They hear a lamentation of the women. Conan the Barbarian, just one of the great highlights this Bank Holiday Monday on ITV. At a quarter to five, we join ITN for the news. Good afternoon. The sister of the woman shot dead on her own doorstep in Surrey said today she'd still be alive if it wasn't for me. Alison Ponting, under police guard because of fears for her life, broke cover to issue a statement. She confirmed that the murder was a case of mistaken identity and she was the real target. Police officers are carrying out door-to-door -door inquiries throughout the housing estate in Woking where Karen Reed was gunned down. Detectives say the gunman spoke a few words of perfect English before shooting her on her doorstep. Karen's sister, Alison Ponting, the intended target of the assassin, is under police protection at a secret address. This afternoon, she sent a faxed message to Woking Police Station. She wrote, I am deeply shocked and distraught by the death of my sister Karen, who was murdered so horrifically simply because of her relationship to me. She was a wonderful, warm, understanding person who can never be replaced and who will be forever missed by everyone who knew her. Police today displayed the red Vauxhall Cavalier, which two weeks ago they chased through the estate. The driver escaped on foot, leaving behind a gun and a map with local houses marked on it. It's thought the same man returned on Saturday night to carry out the shooting. Charlotte Hume, ITN, in Woking. A top-level meeting of the International Automobile Federation is to be held this week to discuss the safety of Formula One motor racing after the death of Ayrton Senna. Williams' team members arrived back in Britain to find the gates of their headquarters piled high with flowers. All day, people living near the Williams headquarters have been arriving to pay their respects. A wall of flowers and messages has been built up on the gates of the building as people mark the passing of the Brazilian who'd been adopted as a local hero. 
Well, it's uh, such an integral part of Didcot. I live in the town and uh, it's a great loss. You know, um, just makes you wonder whether these rule changes they made it for the better. They had the wider wheels when they had the traction control and the active suspension. They took away the active suspension, never gave them the whip back. I feel it was all wrong. It was an unnecessary death. Uh, something should have been done before and does it take all this before somebody will realise that they have to consult the right people? Some Senna supporters who'd never even met their hero were moved to tears. I don't know, he's just so, so nice. It's so sad, isn't it? Senna's apartment in Brazil has also been besieged by devoted supporters. The president of the country has declared the next three days should be days of mourning. Fans at the start of this football game chanted his name repeatedly. The team boss, Frank Williams, arrived back in Britain this afternoon. He was too upset to speak to reporters, but issued this statement. Williams Grand Prix Engineering is a family, and although Ayrton had only joined us this season, he and I enjoyed a long-standing relationship and I'm proud that the first Formula One car he ever drove was a Williams. The wreck of Ayrton Senna's car is expected back here in the next few days. At the moment, it's impounded in San Marino, where engineers are carrying out a detailed investigation to try and find out any clues as to the cause of the crash. James Bayes, ITN, Didcot. There's speculation in South Africa that President F.W. de Klerk is on the verge of conceding defeat in the South African elections. He's called a press conference at 5 o'clock, and sources say he'll say that the ANC has won. With just over a third of the votes counted, Nelson Mandela's African National Congress Party has 60% of the vote. F.W. de Klerk's National Party has 25%. That's more than it expected. In third place is in Carter on 7%, and the right-wing Freedom Front has 3%. 100 non-essential workers have been evacuated by helicopter from an oil rig in the North Sea. The rescue operation followed reports of a gas leak on the Piper Bravo oil platform 120 miles northeast of Aberdeen. Police say there was one minor explosion. The alarm was first raised on the Piper Bravo rig, seen here under construction after an explosion on the flare stack used to burn off excess gas. Emergency procedures were initiated and a decision was made to evacuate the rig of all non-essential personnel. At least seven military and civilian helicopters were scrambled to take part in the airlift. We understand there were several minor gas leaks on the flare stack, which resulted in a minor explosion. Uh, the situation is that uh, there are 180 persons on board, nobody has been injured and all personnel have been accounted for. In July 1988, it was a gas leak on the Piper Alpha platform which led to a huge explosion. In the fire that followed, 167 men were killed. The operators of Piper Bravo are now confident today's emergency is over and an investigation into the gas leak is already underway. John Smith has called for an immediate general election if the Prime Minister was forced to step down. The Labour leader's attack came as a senior Tory backbencher called for half a dozen Cabinet members to be sacked. Over to our chief political correspondent, Glyn, tell us more. Well, John Smith was seeking to make the most of the renewed talk about John Major's future. Cabinet ministers, he said, were sitting at their desks, not doing their jobs, but wondering how they can dump the Prime Minister. If that were to happen, John Smith called for an immediate general election. I think I speak for far more than just the Labour Party when I say that the Tories will not get, a won't get away once again with dumping an unpopular Prime Minister without any reference to the electorate. Well, one of the Prime Minister's closest supporters, Gillian Shepherd, accepted that what she called a tiny handful of Conservative MPs were determined to cause problems for the Prime Minister, and she expressed her exasperation at what she saw as these disruptive tactics. And one outspoken backbencher, David Evans, said in public what many of John Major's backers are saying in private, the need for a big cabinet shake-up after the European elections. David Evans called for six cabinet ministers to be sacked, amongst them John Gummer, William Waldegrave and John Patton. Well, the Liberal Democrats saw all this as further evidence. The Conservatives are deeply divided and lacking in leadership. Glenn Mathias, ITN, Westminster. 
Police in Scotland say people who bought tablets similar to ecstasy at a rave party at the weekend may be carrying time bombs in their pockets. Two men who went to the party in air have died. The youths were stretchered unconscious from this rave venue on air seafront in the early hours of yesterday morning. Doctors at the local hospital could do little to save them. Today, as police tried to find out who'd sold them the fatal dose of ecstasy-type drugs, they issued this appeal. It's a wee time bomb that's ticking away in their pocket. They should get in touch with us, bring us the drugs, bring us the drugs in confidence. I've got to have these drugs so that I know what I'm talking about, so that I know what sort of, a sort of drug is on the street. Scots Labour MPs are now calling for tighter controls on all rave parties. These kind of uh, places are breeding grounds for drug dealers. They're ideal fertile ground for them uh, to peddle their drugs to uh, uh, young people. And in this case, the people who peddle the drugs to these two youngsters, in fact, were responsible for manslaughter. And that's all for now. I'll be back with tonight's late news at 10 o'clock. Until then, goodbye. Hello. Well, many of us have been blessed with a fine holiday weekend, but there's been some rain around in southeast Scotland and northeast England today, and as low pressure moves onto the scene, so things look much more unsettled for the next few days. There'll be some bright spells around, no doubt, but there'll be a lot of showers as well, so a more unsettled picture for the next few days. Now, this afternoon has been fine for most of us. The evening will be the same, but there have been some bursts of rain in southeast Scotland, northeast England. They'll gradually die away to leave a dry night for most of us, a fairly uneventful night, as you see. But I've been reminded that gardeners need to know what the temperatures are doing this time of year. There'll be no frost tonight, you'll be pleased to hear. A breezy scene for tomorrow, quite strong southeasterly winds, a dry, bright start for virtually everyone. But there'll be a thicker cloud moving up from the south and west, some patchy rain around, and that's going to turn more showery as it heads further north during the day. Scotland dry for most of the day, you'll stay dry, I think, until the evening. But England, Wales and Northern Ireland seeing some showery bursts of rain during the afternoon. Strong winds, as we've said, from the southeast. That's making a wide variation in the temperatures. On the coast, around 12 to 15. But in land, 17 or 18 is quite easily on the cards. 18 is about 64. Now let's go further ahead and see just how unsettled things are. A reminder of tomorrow's showery rain moving north. And Wednesday is a classic day of sunshine and showers, with some of the showers turning out to be really quite heavy, perhaps even thundery in places. Thursday and Friday, just as mixed as the showery weather moves away eastwards, so thick a cloud comes back in from the west, with more bursts of rain to come. So it's a fair old mixture over the next few days. Showery just about sums it up. Some sunny bits around, but some heavy bursts of rain to watch out for as well. Here's a summary. And a very good afternoon from the Calendar News Desk. Bradford City has sacked manager Frank Stapleton and the assistant manager Stuart Pearson. Stapleton and Pearson were appointed by the club around two and a half years ago. The move comes just two days after the club failed to qualify for the Division II playoffs after being beaten 3-1 by Plymouth Argyle. The chairman, Geoffrey Richmond, who took over control of City three months ago, said Frank Stapleton had taken the news very well, but the decision was necessary because the Bradford fans deserve better. The third season running, we've finished in mid-table. Um, we have 6,500 very loyal supporters who had five or six years of this same mediocrity, and under this new era, I'm determined to give them the success that they deserve. And the youth team coach Steve Smith has been asked to take over as caretaker manager for the two remaining matches of the season. A special constable has appeared before Bradford magistrates accused of inciting two young girls to commit acts of gross indecency. 46-year-old self-employed plumber Terence Kay of Rochdale Road in Greetland at Halifax was charged with an offence against a three-year-old and another against a four-year-old. He was remanded in custody for a week. Police in West Yorkshire are warning youngsters not to play too close to rivers. The call follows the death of an eight-year-old, David Jackson, who drowned after falling 20 feet into a river while playing on a pipe across the River Calder near Dewsbury. David died despite desperate attempts by a passerby and firefighters to rescue him. He'd been playing with two other children, including his nine-year-old brother, when the accident happened. 
uh, sorry, and police are now appealing for youngsters to realise the risks of playing near the water. And children playing with matches are being blamed for starting a fire at a North Yorkshire farm, which caused tens of thousands of pounds damage. Around 20 firefighters tackled the blaze at Manor House Farm on Newsham Lane near Thursk. The fire destroyed more than 700 straw bales and a number of pieces of agricultural machinery. No one was actually injured and police say they believe that children started the fire deliberately. Cricket and the friendly match between Yorkshire and Lancashire looks set to end in a draw. Yorkshire was set 322 win after Lancashire declared a 225 for four in their second innings. Yorkshire are currently 164 for one with the captain Martin Moxon having made an unbeaten century. Finally, thousands of motor enthusiasts turned out for one of the region's biggest transport festivals. The Yorkshire Festival of Transport has been held over two days at Allerton Park in Knaresborough. As well as displays of vintage cars from both Britain and America, visitors were also treated to four-wheel drive demonstrations and the sights and sounds of traditional steam engines. That's it. See you again tonight. Bye-bye. Fine dry evenings in store for the region with some hazy sunshine to round off the day. It will also remain dry overnight with fairly well broken cloud. Temperatures around 5 degrees Celsius, 41 degrees Fahrenheit, but the wind will freshen a little from the southeast. Tomorrow will start fine and dry with some hazy sunshine at first. As we head into the afternoon, though, cloud will thicken from the west and some scattered showers will develop, especially towards the evening. Temperatures will reach 17 degrees Celsius, 63 degrees Fahrenheit in places, but it will remain cooler on the coast. Those are the details. We leave you with tomorrow's summary chart. In this month's Action Time, we're trying to give disadvantaged and disabled children a taste of life down on the farm and equipping a travelling playbus for children in a remote rural area. We'll also be looking back at last month's successful challenge. That's all happening Tuesday, 7.30. That's Action Time. And there's action after the break with Sean Connery as James Bond in Goldfinger. puts the tea in Britain. Typhoon. Mm, I see Billy's got his Kellogg's variety again, Wendy. Well, he just loves the little boxes. The trouble is, they're all his favourites. Billy, do you want me to choose for you? <laughs> Kellogg's variety. Now eight packs for the price of seven. Good morning. Quick fit, Alan speaking. How can I help you? You may only need the rear silencer, Mr. Phillips. This is your receipt and two-year exhaust guarantee. 
Your tyres are fine, you've still got a few thousand miles left on them. You can call Talking Pages free for all the business numbers you need. Uh, Harding's office developers. Call Talking Pages free on 0800 600 900. Now James Bond is sent to foil the plans of arch-villain Goldfinger.